Right now you are going to learn about the weirdest laws in the history of the world. Let's begin. Back in the Middle Ages, a time known for knights, castles and great battles, in some parts of Europe people were actually told not to bath and bathing was illegal. But why? Back then people were afraid of two main things. First, they thought that taking a bath could make you sick. The idea was that hot water would open up your pores and that would let diseases sneak into your body. Remember, this was long before science scientists understood germs and how diseases really spread. The second reason is a bit surprising. Public baths were pretty popular, kind of like today's spas, but over time they got a bad reputation. The church started to see these baths as places of sin rather than spots for cleaning up. They thought that if people are going to avoid bathing, they will live a more spiritual and morally correct lives. So instead of taking baths, people found other ways to clean themselves. They would rub their skin with linen cloths, which they believed was a safer and more acceptable way to stay clean without offending anyone or risking their health. This medieval bath ban shows how different life was back then. And how much we have learned about staying healthy and, well, cleaning ourselves. Back in the 7th century, in Greece, a legislator named Draca was first to write down laws. Before him, people just settled arguments with fights or followed all the rules that were spoken, not written. The problem is that Draco decided that almost any crime, big or small, should be punished by death. Whether you killed someone or stole an apple, you could be put to death. Draco believed that all of the crimes were serious enough to deserve death. After Draco, another leader called Solon changed these rules. He got rid almost of all death penalties except the one for murder. Draco's laws didn't last long, but we still remember his name. Today, when we think a punishment is too harsh for a small mistake, we call it draconian. Have you ever imagined living in a world where the law decides what you can wear or eat based on your job or rank in society? Well, in many places around the world, like Renaissance Italy, Edo period Japan and Elizabethan England, England, this was a reality. These rules were called sumptuary laws. Sumptuary laws were like the fashion police of that time. They told people exactly what they could and couldn't wear. For example, only certain people could wear silk or velvet, while others were stuck with simpler fabrics. And it wasn't just about clothes. These laws even limited the kind of food and the number of dishes that could be served at meals depending on your social status. The main idea behind such laws were to keep the society strong structure very clear. By looking at someone's clothes, you could tell their rank and wealth. Today, the idea of the government telling us what to wear or eat because of our social status seems pretty strange, but back then it was just a part of life aimed to keep society organized and modest. United Kingdom is known for its strange laws, and even though some of them are made up, others are actually real. For example, a long time ago, there was a law that required every household to own a longbow and engage in weekly archery practice. Many such quirky laws have been removed over time. However, there is one very peculiar law that exists even today, and it is the prohibition against wearing a suit of armor in the House of Parliament. This rule dates back to 1313, under the reign of Edward III. Edward's time as a king was troubled with rebellions, and he introduced this law to stop powerful nobles from wearing armor to parliament sessions, which could intimidate others. Tsar Peter the Great was a ruler who looked up to Western Europe for inspiration. He brought Western clothing, art, philosophy and architecture to Russia, with St. Petersburg as a prime example. However, one of the differences he noticed was the lack of beards in the West, whereas in Russia beards were common among all men, from peasants to daylight, as they were thought to bring a man closer to God. To change this, Peter introduced a beard tax, making it almost illegal for most to have a beard. Those who could afford the tax were given a special token as proof that they were allowed to keep their beards. Anyone who couldn't pay the tax or didn't have the token could have been officially shaved by the police. In the UK, if you are planning to fish near the English coast, remember that Queen and King had the rights to all whales, dolphins and sturgeons caught within 3 miles of the shore. In Scotland, this applies to any whale larger than 25 feet. This tradition dates back to Edward II's time and is still in effect. So if you happen to catch a sturgeon in British water, you are required to offer it to the king. This isn't done through modern technology, but by contracting Buckingham Palace directly to report your catch of a royal fish and wait for further instructions. Typically, you might be allowed to keep or sell the fish, but it's important to check before doing anything to avoid any legal complications. 
Football, with its deep historical roots, has faced bands in England, Scotland and France. The earliest recorded band was issued by King Edward III in 1314, who prohibited the game within London city limits due to merchants' complaints about disruption to trade. This band was the first among several which monarchs like Richard II, Henry IV and even Henry VIII, who famously ordered the first pair of football boots, implementing their own restrictions. Their main concern was that football detracted from mandatory archery practice. In Scotland, King James I took the similar action in 1424. He imposed a fine for playing football and a band remained officially in force for centuries despite being widely ignored. France also tried to impose restrictions on their version of football called La Sole, with bands enacted in 1319 and 1369. 